Good morning, one and all. We invite you to come into God's presence and celebrate Sabbath time with us. Whether you are sitting in the pews or joining us virtually, we welcome you to worship at St. Paul's United Church of Christ. Please know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, but with a special emphasis on the gifts of God's creation and the role we play in honoring the Creator and in promoting creation care and working for a more sustainable future for the natural world. The psalmist says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And today our handbell choir will enhance our worship with their joyous ringing. We hope you have enjoyed this time before worship to visit with your neighbors, but now we want you to invite you to use the time during the musical prelude to quiet your minds, your hearts, and your voices for worship. rise in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship. 
We walk in wonder beneath the sun and stars. Creation is God's masterpiece, and we are blessed to share it. We give thanks for the air, the land, and the water, and for the creatures joined together in the web of life. Beauty is before us, around us, over us, and beneath us. We therefore join in our hearts, minds, and spirits as one in thanks and awe. May we come and see all there is to see and how much our cups are overflowing. Forgive us, Creator God, for failing to recognize your creatures by name, for our abuses of the prairie grass and the trees, the dodo bird, the squash berry, the flock moth, the passenger pigeon, the whale, and the wolf, for clear-cutting your forests, for tearing down your mountains, for polluting you to extract fossil fuels and precious metals for dumping our waste into your waters. Teach us respect, merciful one, until we learn to live gently with creation, to stop demanding from it what we want, 
but to accept only what it offers and do so with deep gratitude, abundance of life, and for all your blessings and creations. We pray for true balance in your name. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to see you here today. Thank you for coming. And I'm grateful to be with you here this morning to share our children's message with our youngest Christians here in Sanctuary and online. Well, I want to talk with you today about this stained glass window behind me here. So beautiful. It shows a shepherd caring for a baby lamb and an adult lamb. Now, most of us know about shepherds having seen them on Christmas cards and learning how it was shepherds in the fields that first learned of Jesus' birth on that very first Christmas. And shepherds still are caring for their flocks to this day in different parts of the world. Now, one of the most well-known verses from the Bible is the 23rd Psalm. It was written by David. Now, I don't know when he wrote it, but I'm thinking it was from when he was a shepherd as a young boy working for his family. And did you know that the book of Psalms is a song book? And the 23rd Psalm is known as David's song to God. And in it, David compares how a shepherd cares for his sheep, just like God cares for us and loves us. So let's talk about how a shepherd cares for his sheep. Well, he does that by leading them to where they can find grass to eat and water to drink. He provides for them. And he uses his staff to guide them, to keep them from wandering off and getting lost and getting into dangerous situations. And he rubs oil on their heads to keep insects from their eyes and ears and nose. And he does all this so the sheep can feel safe and feel peace when they lie down and rest. Well, when we think about how a shepherd does all these things to care for his sheep, we have a better understanding of how God cares for us and provides for what we need to feel safe, peaceful, and loved. Let me read a couple of the verses from Psalm 23, and I'll add some comments. The first verse, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack anything. God will provide everything we need. He makes me to lie down in fields of green and leads me beside still waters. God provides us safety and peace. And here's an important one. Though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are with me. That's so important. We don't have to be afraid of anything. God is with us always. His presence gives us strength and hope. And here's our last one. My cup runs over. What a strange verse. Our abundant God desires to pour out excessive love and blessings to those who love him. God fills us with overflowing joy, overflowing love, and overflowing peace. So when you look at this window, let it remind you that God is our shepherd who provides and cares and loves us so very much. Will you bow your heads as I say a prayer? Holy God, like sheep, we too need a shepherd to care for us, provide for our needs, and love us. We open our hearts to you. Fill them to overflowing with your love and blessings. 
In your holy name we pray. Amen. We have two scripture readings this morning. The first scripture reading is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second scripture is from the book of John 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lie down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. And I have authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. The 23rd Psalm is certainly one of those uh, books, chapters of the Bible that uh, we've probably heard variations on and different translations. Many of us probably even memorized the King James Version of the 23rd Psalm and of course the New International Version which is the one that we read from uh, but there's also the New Revised Standard Version which uh, has some variances so you will notice uh, as I quote a few more of the verses of the Psalm uh, some variances so uh, it's always good to hear the different translations uh, and enjoy uh, how there are differences and similarities and so forth. So, Grace and peace be to you all from God, our Creator, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray this day that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable to our God, who is our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In my 35 or so years as a pastor, the question I've probably been asked the most is, how do I find God? People have struggled with that question. How do I find God? Now, this is not typically the kind of question that comes from those already sitting in the pews on Sunday morning, but rather from those who have very little history with organized religion. And here's my go-to answer. Rolling up my sleeves, I say, you want to step outside? I'll show you. <laughs> then, of course, I usually offer a simple theological explanation. How the personality of the creator is reflected outside in the natural world. How literally the nature of God is mirrored in all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. You get the picture. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. One of the best ways to build a rapport with God is by engaging the, the divine in the natural world. For to have a love affair 
with all things natural is the same as loving the Lord our God with all our hearts, minds, souls, and strength. Therefore, we do to planet Earth, when we do, everything we do, to planet Earth we do to God. Everything we do with planet Earth, we do with God. It's that simple. So how fitting on this day before Earth Day, this Earth Day Sunday, that we continue to celebrate the power of resurrection as we are in the Easter season, that we continue to celebrate the power of resurrection, a concept that becomes so much more believable and relatable when we witness it through the natural world. For the miracle that is creation. And I hope you appreciate the display on our worship space this morning that our altar guild put together so craftily and naturally. And yes, we can probably let the rest of the community know that St. Paul's Church brought grass to church. <laughs> We're providing grass and worship today. We might get more attendance if we put it out there, right? Today is also Shepherd Sunday. And we begin with the familiar words, the Lord is my shepherd. To describe God as our caregiver and the guiding force in our lives. And the words that follow, again, here's some variances in the different translations. I typically use the phrase, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In short, what that's saying is that with God as our shepherd, what else do we need? Or to hear it out of the mouth of a babe, a six-year-old girl who summed it up rather succinctly saying, the Lord is my shepherd, that's all I want. <laughs> True story. With faith in a shepherd God, we lack for nothing. Which is not good news for retailers, right? Who think otherwise, who want to sell us a bill of goods. So if we all practiced that line, the Lord is my shepherd, that's all I want, then we will probably put a few businesses out of business. Because we're not going to be buying right and left, am I right? If Psalm 23 does anything for us, it brings us back to the basics. It helps to put things in perspective. It reminds us about what's really important or necessary to living a life that one might consider full. Or a life of contentment. To boldly say, my cup is already overflowing. So what else do I need? When we stop and think about it, <clears throat> especially as we consider the blessings of the natural world, our God is the, the one who not only provides all our wants and needs, but is the one who cares for us, who guides us, who assists us with our own self-care who anoints us, who feeds us, and who keeps us from wandering into dangerous territory, but who actually goes with us even into the darkest valleys. In unpacking Psalm 23, we discover so many useful nuggets of wisdom and inspiration. For instance, Kevin's already pointed out a couple of them, but did you know that unlike other animals, sheep can't really take care of themselves? 
It's true. Sheep are pretty much helpless without a shepherd. Sheep are actually nearsighted. They can't see more than five feet in front of them. So without a shepherd, they're more likely to fall into harm's way. Or did you know with, that without proper supervision, sheep will eat poisonous plants? Or did you know that sheep, by animal standards, are prone to depression? No other livestock in the animal kingdom requires such vigilant care as do sheep. Thus, without a good shepherd, a sheep would likely be dead inside a week's time. So the psalmist is brilliant in comparing people without a guardian God to sheep without a shepherd. Because we humans do tend to be short-sighted. We are very vulnerable. We are quite prone to straying from the path of righteousness. And yes, that we are given to depression. Therefore, we interpret these words not simply as a lovely poetic metaphor, but as a reminder that next to God, we are nothing more than dependent sheep. How many of you went home after Easter brunch a few weeks ago and took a nap? Yeah. It's a great thing to do after a big meal. Well, the psalmist is very intentional here in saying, God makes me lie down when I need to rest. Not all that different from the parent who insists that their child take a much-needed nap after lunch. The psalmist is not mincing words here. The shepherd makes me to lie down in green pastures because that's what I need to do whether I want to or not. But to fully comprehend the meaning of this verse, we need to remember that grass is a sheep's main diet. That would be a good promotional ad for free grazing. <clears throat> the shepherd doesn't lead his flock to barren, stony fields. He leads them to lush, green pastures where their hunger is satisfied and where they can find respite to be restored body, mind, and spirit. Now stay with me now. It's also helpful to know that sheep have been known to overindulge. They have been known to overindulge themselves and if they are lying down, they can no longer consume grass. So by making them lie down, basically that causes them to stop eating. So the shepherd makes them lie down so they don't overindulge. And starting out as early as four in the morning, sheep will eat nonstop. Interesting to comparison if you think about us as being kind of the overindulgent types that we are. And considering that sheep move continuously as they graze, that by mid-morning the sun can be blazing in the sky and the sheep don't realize that they are getting hot and tired and dehydrated. But wait, no drinking until after nap time. You see, the good shepherd knows that if the sheep drink water on a full stomach of undigested grass, they will get a bellyache. So, after lunch, before taking them to the watering hole, the shepherd first makes them lie down in the soft grass for a while. Kind of like the no swimming for a half an hour after lunch rule. 
So only when the shepherd can get them to lie down can they actually begin to digest their food. So after a short nap, the shepherd will then lead them to the watering hole. Now what's another interesting note is that sheep are deathly afraid of fast moving water. For obvious reasons, I hope. They're afraid of moving water because they are fearful that their wool, if it got saturated, would consequently cause them to be overweight, if you will, and not be able to sustain themselves and maybe drown. So it's off to still waters. It's off to still waters where they can then have a cool drink. Well, yes, if you haven't already made the obvious connection, we two-leggeds, we humans, are not all that different from sheep. And we often don't know when to stop. We overindulge. Is that an understatement? We overindulge in everything from food and alcohol to work. We spend, 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 and spend some more because we are told as consumers, what? That we always need more. And that we're never good enough as we are. Marketing people know that. They emphasize that, that we need more or that we're never good enough, so we need to buy all the newest and latest pro uh, products. And it goes without saying that we're always in a hurry. We're always in such a hurry and we live at such a frantic pace that we ignore the need to lie down in green pastures and really digest life. So, considering our priorities and our lifestyle choices, somewhere along the way, we lost the art of rest. We forgot how to be still. We forgot how to be still and to appreciate life to its fullest. So to that, I say to you, you want to step outside? And I'll show you something really, really cool. Or maybe I'll say something, you really need to take a bath in nature. Some of you know what I'm talking about. The need to just step outside, to take 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever time you can afford, to just immerse yourself in the natural world. It's very therapeutic and very healing. So go, immerse yourselves in the glory of God's creation and celebrate nature with awe and wonder. And I dare you. I dare you not to fall in love for the first time or all over again. I dare you not to fall in love with God's creation. And here's a special note. Because when I talk with people about creation care or promoting the integrity of the environment, I say the first step is to fall in love. 
Because when you love something so much, what is the tendency to do? Take better care of it. When you love something so dearly, you want to take better care of it. Sometimes I'm very hopeful, sometimes I'm very discouraged with how we're dealing with the many challenges of caring for our environment. And doggone it, why the heck did it have to become politicized? Can I get an amen or can I get an amen? You know, it's like, why is creation care and things like climate change, why did that have to become political? It's our moral obligation as people of the earth and of God's children to take care of that which has been entrusted to us. We are stewards. And so if we're taking a course on environmental stewardship 101, step one, fall in love with nature all over again. And some of you have already heard by now that I'm a huge fan and advocate for outdoor ministry. Ben Roxworthy, good morning. Some of you don't know that that young man, 30 years ago when he was in high school, attended a Boundary Waters canoe adventure trip to northern Minnesota, along with a little bit of rock climbing. That's what I mean by immerse, immersing oneself in nature, but, but to plan programs that intentionally raise awareness and raise a level of appreciation for the environment. And by golly, um, it changes you. It really does. So um, if you haven't already seen the little promotional ad that we've put out in the newsletter uh, for our church camps here in Illinois, especially Pilgrim Park that offers opportunities for grandparents to bring their kids to camp. And that would be, many, in many cases, their first encounter uh, doing church camp. It is life-changing. It can be life-changing. So as we celebrate the arrival of another outdoor season, may we be reminded, and yes, even reprimanded, that we need a heavenly parent who will stop us like children and make us take a nap. We need a shepherd who will make us to lie down in green pastures for our own good and for the good of the planet. Who will teach us what it means to stop and smell the roses. We need a shepherd who will lead us to springs of living water. And may we drink of it with gratitude. Gratitude to the one who provides it. The one who gives us all that we want and all that we need. The ever-present, always nurturing, always providing, shepherding God. took the time last week to enjoy the eclipse. It was a lot of hype. It was a lot of hype. But, you know, it's just one again of the many ways that we can connect. Because the heavens are telling of God's glory. And the heavens also tell God's story. If we but pay attention. Several of our church camps are on water. And Christopher Grundy, songwriter, has spent a great deal of time at those camps, especially Tower Hill Camp, which is our Illinois Conference camp that's located on the other side of Lake Michigan in Indiana, but it is an Illinois Conference camp. Um, and also uh, one of my favorite camps up north, um, Moon Beach Camp. Uh, which is in St. Germain, Wisconsin, and I've spent a great deal of time uh, 
working with folks and being part of outdoor ministry in Wisconsin. Uh, and so as our prayer time this morning, uh, I would like to use this song that Christopher wrote as the moon. So let us be in the spirit of prayer. Forgive us when we fail to look up. When we fail to look out. And when we fail to capture the wonder. And to feel amazed at all that is of your making. So many things that we take for granted. So many things that we consume without giving it a second thought. So many things that we take away, but sometimes fail to give back. And help us, loving God, to be mindful and to be stewards of all that is from you. And that to not just think of it as a resource, but as a blessing. And as we participate in the care and the feeding, as we strive to find better ways to help sustain our natural world, and that we, in essence, are borrowing it from the next generation without giving enough thought to how our footprint impacts the environment. We know, loving God, that there is healing power in creation. And as Jesus reminded us that he was like the good shepherd, the one who cares for us. But may we also think of ourselves as good shepherds as well, as we seek to tend and to garden and to nurture and to return 
but always with a sense of gratitude. And knowing that there is healing power in nature, help all of us to feel your love and your grace overflowing us like a gentle stream. Or that your spirit <clears throat> is moving through us and among us like that cool, refreshing breeze. We know, loving God, that there are those among us who are in special need this day of your healing presence. And so we pray for those who are dealing with challenges, health challenges, emotional challenges, spiritual challenges. Help us all to know you better, to know of your grace and of your love and of your healing power. And we cannot speak in prayer without extending our heartfelt gratitude as we give thanks for all that is you, for all that is around us and in abundance and how our cup definitely overflows. So we give thanks this day and we ask for your continued support and blessing as we seek to be the stewards of not just this planet, but of the church as well, as we strive to be the best that we can be within the power and the gifts and the talents that you have given us. So we pray this day in Jesus' name and give thanks for all of your blessings as the moon. <laughs> God, incline your ear to us and grant us your peace as we pray together now the prayer that the Good Shepherd taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. <clears throat> Amen. Once again, we greet you in the spirit of loving kindness. We are thankful for the many newsworthy happenings as we celebrate the community of Christ that we are here at St. Paul's United Church of Christ. My name is Linda Ticknor, and I want to thank you for joining us for worship today, either in person or online. If you have not already done so, please sign the attendance book located in your pews and pass it along to the other folks in your pew. 
The flowers this morning were provided by Donna Reber in honor of her husband's heavenly 90th birthday. We could not sustain our ministry without the generous support of our members and friends. If you do not choose to drop your offering in the offering plates during the musical offertory, you can always find the donation link on our website or you can always mail in your gift. A special word of thanks to all who helped make last week's faith, food, and fellowship service a huge success that it was. Our next food, faith, and fellowship service will take place on May 12th, which is Mother's Day. And you know what that means? We are counting on the men of the church to oversee serving and cleaning up the breakfast portion of the morning. I believe there is a sign-up sheet out in the narthex. Everyone is invited to partner with Mary Circle in the collection of Church World Service disaster kits. If you would like to contribute, you can pick up a supply list at the Information Center in the narthex. You can also find information about the list in the weekly chatter. All supplies and kits must be returned to the collection box in the narthex on or before this Wednesday, April 24th. Your help is greatly appreciated. And just a reminder that next week, is bingo down in Fellowship Hall with a delicious pulled pork luncheon. Please join us in Fellowship Hall right after the worship service. Um, please sign up on the board in the narthex so we can plan appropriately. If you would like to bring a salad, chips, or dessert, note that on the list as well. And don't forget the white elephant gift for bingo prizes. See you next week. And also today, um, on, your, on your way out of the sanctuary, the church has provided a packet of pollinator seeds. So if you are a gardener or have room, a small place in your yard to plant these seeds or take one perhaps for a neighbor or a family member that can plant them. Um, and it's just our gift to you to um, kind of kick off Earth Day and creation care, um, supplying beautiful pollinating flowers for our pollinators. Thank you. God invites us to claim our birthright and adoption as God's partners in healing our earthly home. In addition to participating in our monetary offering today, let us commit to doing one thing that will benefit creation. It could be spending some time picking up trash or collecting recyclables along the road near you, or creating a compost pile, or repurposing something to prevent it from going into a landfill. You decide, but do something today. We were created in God's image and therefore can give at a level that will make an impact. We give not until it hurts, but until it feels like we are actually making a difference.
with grateful hearts for all we have received. We offer these gifts, O God, to give tangible expressions to your work in expressing our three great loves, love of children, love of neighbor, love of creation. We offer them and ask you to bless them with the spirit of Christ, who showed us how to care as you care. Amen. Number 38. <laughs> Stevens wrote, Morning Has Broken, uh, a little bit naive, until one time I was in church and I saw it in our hymnal. It's like, oh, this is actually a hymn, and Cat Stevens just made it popular. So, anyway, <laughs> may the peace of God abide in you and the love of Christ fill your hearts, and may the power of the Holy Spirit sustain you this day and forevermore, and may you go in peace, loving God's creation, in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, 